Hey, what's going on, guys? Goose here, man, and uh, hope everybody's enjoying their Thursday. Is this another, another preview uh, video for 2020 football season? Hopefully, we have it. And this is gonna be about the uh, for the Miami Hurricanes. And before I get started, before I get started, if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Also, give the video a thumbs up if you please, and also ring the notification bell and click all notifications so you get notified when we do live streams on the channel, videos, hangouts, whatever. All right, guys, so the Miami Hurricanes. Uh, you know, growing up, you know, I remember the time when Miami Hurricanes were a dominant football program. The talent that they have down there in South Florida to recruit is just uh, unprecedented. Unprecedented. It's just, uh, it's, it's, it's just, it's a hotbed. It's a hotbed of football recruits, and uh, Miami could probably just recruit down there, and uh, just and and build a build a team just for the talent that they have down there. Uh, it's really uh, surprising that uh, that they haven't really been in that dominant football program since the early 2000s when they went to the uh, title game, lost to Ohio State. Um, and uh, since they've been to the since they moved to the ACC, they just have not been that dominant football program they were when they were in the Big East. Whatever reason that is, but um, they just uh, just haven't been that. So, um, but let's look over. Uh, let's see, like I said, they were last year. They were six and seven last season. Lost to Louisiana Tech in the uh, in the bowl game. Finished, and that just can't happen. I mean, that can't happen for a school like Miami to finish six and seven and lose until Louisiana Tech gets shut out by Louisiana Tech, fourteen nothing. Um, just uh, you know, this that just that just can't happen. All right, let's look over. Let's look over their twenty twenty schedule, and then we'll. Um, Look over what they, uh, how the uh, their opponents did last year. All right, so they uh, have a home game against Temple, home game against Wagner, home game against UAB, on the road against Michigan State, at home against the Pitt Panthers, at Wake Forest, home against North Carolina, at Virginia, home against Florida State, at Virginia Tech, at Georgia Tech, and home against the Duke Blue Devils. So, of course, they are in the uh, Colfer Division, which doesn't include Clemson. So. You know, Miami should really be competing for these uh, these division titles year in year out. Uh, they should be, you know, they should definitely be in the top 25 every season. Uh, they should be uh, close to the top 10 every season. Just, um, I mean, just just with the talent that they can uh, that they can get at Miami, but for whatever reason, whatever reason, they just have not been able to do that. So last year, they uh, of course we went over there for six and seven last year. Uh, got shut out in their bowl game. So what they do, they bring in a new offensive coordinator, which is probably a smart move by Manny Diaz, as they got uh, Red Lashley from SMU. Uh, SMU averaged 41 points per game last season. So he's going to bring over a spread offense to run with De'Ara King, the uh, transfer they got from the Houston Cougars. In 2018, this guy threw for 38 touchdowns. Uh, this guy had a lot of talent, and uh, so he's uh, should be a definite upgrade for the Hurricanes. Now, the Hurricanes, they recruited well in 2020 as they had the second second rated class in the ACC. Of course, Clemson was number one in the conference, but that's where my, that's where Clemson, I'm sorry, that's where Miami should be, you know, in the recruiting ranking, especially in the conference. Uh, they should be up there in the top three every year. Um, just, like I said, with the talent that they can get in South Florida. So Cam, uh, Cameron Harris is the probably going to be the returning running back, but he's going to be pushed by a uh, Two four-star recruits that they got in the uh, recruiting class, Don Chaney and Jalen uh, Knighton. As uh, Harris, uh, you know, he brings at least he brings, he brings experience. Uh, he played last year, so that's probably why he'll start uh, beginning of the season. And uh, their offensive line, they return all their offensive linemen from last year, but the offensive line was kind of a weak spot for them. But they do bring them all back, so the continuity is there. Uh, so you, at least at least you have that going for you, but. Of course, they're going to have to improve. And then their defensive ends, they got uh, Roche from a, uh, the group of five. Last, he was in a group of five last year. He's a very good talent, and we're so for Miami. So on the ends, they have uh, two great pass rushers on the end. So their defense, you know, the defense uh, should be okay next year. But it's their offense, I think, uh, that needs a lot of work. Like I said, they they, they uh, got shut out in their bowl game by Louisiana Tech. All right, so Tipple finished eight and five last season. They're in the, of course, they're in the AAC, as uh, they're, you know, Tipple's, uh, Tipple's been a decent football program for their conference, but um, they should never really be, you know, uh, on uh, Miami's level, but right now they are, because Miami's just not, they just have not, uh, for whatever reason, Miami's just not done well um, in the uh, last, uh, 
seems like seems like uh, 10, 15 years. But I did see something today where Miami's. Uh, if you look at the NFL, the number of snaps at the uh, what what college, what college, uh, what college or universities have the most snaps in the NFL. Miami's one, LSU was two. So Miami players go to the NFL and they play. For some reason, they just uh, don't do well in college level. So that's got to change. All right, then they have a home game against Wagner. Didn't do too much job. Did too much research on them because that should be Miami should beat them regardless of uh, their situation. Then they have a home game against UAB. UAB is in the Conference USA. They uh, went to their title game last year, lost. But um, uh, like I said, my, this is this is the game that Miami should win on. Should win every year, but games uh, aren't won on paper. All right, then they have a home. I'm sorry, a road game against Michigan State. Michigan State. Uh, Mark D'Antonio. A long-time coach uh, got resigned, fired, whatever you want to call it. He was probably he probably wasn't gonna get fired if he didn't resign. With all the shenanigans going on at Michigan State, they finished seven and six last season. So they bring uh, Mel Tucker from uh, Colorado. He was there at Colorado one year, and now he goes uh, to Michigan State. Then they have a home game against Pitt. Pitt finished eight and five last season. As Pitt, uh, no, Pitt ended Pitt ended uh, UCF's big uh, win streak that they had during the season last year. So Pitt eight and five. Last season, then they have a road game against Wake Forest. Wake Forest finished uh, eight and five last season. Then UNC, uh, UNC next. North Carolina finished seven and six last season. This Mac Brown's doing a Mac Brown's doing a good job over there at North Carolina. Mac Brown probably they probably should have beaten Clemson last season last year, but Clemson was able to hold on a win. Uh, and UNC is also recruiting well under Mac Brown. Uh, of course, a lot of a lot of people, a lot of prognosticators have UNC winning the Coastal Division. That's probably going to happen, uh, but <clears throat> we'll see. And because uh, Virginia, because the next game that they have at Virginia, Virginia finished nine and five last season. But Virginia is going to they got to replace their quarterback from last season, so expect Virginia to have a uh, you know drop back from what they were last season last year. Then they have a home game against Florida State. Now this you know, back in the nineties, uh, this I mean this was the game to watch every year because you had NFL talent on both sides of the, of the field. The game always was entertaining, always came down to the last minute, it seemed like. But uh, it's lost its luster because both teams, uh, just, you know, both teams, either either one was good, one was bad. So it just uh, has lost that national you know, appeal that it once had. But, you know, as a, as a college football fan, I would love to see this rivalry back to what it once was when you know, both teams were uh, competing for national championships and the games were very entertaining. Then they have back-to-back -back road games at Virginia Tech, at Georgia Tech. Virginia Tech finished uh, eight and five last season. Georgia Tech finished three and nine last season. Of course, Georgia Tech they're trying to uh, revamp their football team because Paul Johnson was there for you know like a decade, seemed like, and, and uh, more than a decade, seemed like. And uh, of course, he ran the triple option, and the triple option is just not gonna not gonna win you football games, uh, especially at the uh, Power Five level. So then they have a home game against Duke. Duke finished five and seven last season. So uh, you know. Of course, they avoid Clemson in the regular season. Of course, if they win the if they win their if they uh, win the division, they're going to play Clemson in the ACC title game. So, what, what's my what's a realistic goal for Miami this year? I mean, because they were six and seven last season, they had a horrible bowl game against uh, Louisiana Tech where they couldn't score a point. I mean, I say, I mean, if they if, if Miami can come out with eight wins and uh, and have a good hat and actually win their bowl game. In the uh, next year, I think I think that'd be a step in the right direction for for Miami. I mean, you're bringing in a new OC, so uh, and it's just gonna, I think it's going to take a few recruiting cycles for Miami to uh, to get to where uh, to get to even close to what Clemson's at. I mean, Clemson's just recruiting at a, at a, at a just a different level than any any uh, school in the ACC is. So until until these schools in the ACC start recruiting at a high level, where they're uh, you know where they getting the five star players? Cause right now, right now Clemson's getting all the five star players. Um, yeah, especially in the ACC. I mean, you look, you look at it, look at it. Clemson's getting all of them, and uh, they're uh, they're not going to Miami. They're not going to Florida State. So that's going to have to change if uh, these schools want to compete with Clemson. So let me let me know what you guys think in the comment section. What's Miami going to finish? I say I say eight. You know, eight and four would probably be a good. Good year for them, I and mean, they, they got they got some tough road games. You got Michigan State um, on the road. 
you know, uh, Virginia, Virginia, it's always tough to play Virginia Tech. And uh, just, uh, I mean, I just, uh, but, you know, they could have, but they could, Miami could, you know, turn the corner with this new offense and win 10 games because they, because they do avoid Clemson. And they do avoid Clemson, which is a good, good thing, especially in the regular season. But let me know, let me know what you guys think in the comments section. Where do you, where do you, where do you see Miami benching? Eight, nine, ten wins? I say eight, I say eight, I say eight wins should really be the, you know, I'm going to think about it. Eight wins should be the floor. Um, the more I think about it, the more the more I look at the schedule and think about it, I think eight wins should be the floor for Miami. Um, eight, I mean, anything less than eight four should should be a would be a failure. Um, you know, North Carolina's gonna be a, North Carolina will be a tough game, just because of what UNC has coming back. I think they got the best quarterback outside of Trevor Lawrence in the ACC. Uh, but let me know what you guys think down in the comment section, and I'll talk to you guys next time.